You're watching Force 13's live streaming service. Very uncomfortably long silence at the start of that stream there. Um, it happens sometimes. The uh, music selection selector thing goes uh, away from us and uh, we start with a bit of delay, but there we go. Uh, this is Force 13 Live. We are covering several systems active right now, mainly on your screen. Tropical Storm Sebastian formed earlier today in the Atlantic. Yes, another named storm and what looks like another weak and drab one at that out in the open part of the North Atlantic Ocean. Elsewhere, most of the action is in the Western Pacific, featuring two cyclones right now. One of them named Kalmegi, which made landfall in the Philippines earlier today, was a typhoon. We've now put it down to 70 miles per hour. JTWC hanging on with that typhoon status in their latest update. Also, a new tropical depression has formed in the Philippine Sea in uh, Kalmegi's footsteps, which will be heading towards the coast of Luzon in the next couple of days and could become another significant rainmaker there. Uh, Kalmegi, by the way, even though it does look awful now in the latest frames, which we will look at shortly, um, it is still likely to deliver a further possibly 15 inches of rain. Sorry, not that many, 7 inches of rain, 175 millimetres. Um, so that is why it is a CDPS stage 3 this morning as you wake up over in the Philippines, just past 7 a.m., 6 p.m. Uh, on the U.S. East Coast. My name's Nathan Foy. I'm joined by our Discord team this evening, which consists of Ethan, Cooper, Thomas, and Sam. Good evening to you all. Good evening. Uh, yeah, good evening. It, it's a... It's great to be here, and uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about quite a bit this evening as the tropics are active, especially for November, in the Northern Hemisphere, and I, I think there's going to be a lot to talk about, especially with Kalmagi and uh, Sebastian. I think there is quite yeah, interesting. Now, we were doing a lot of tweeting earlier today on the Force 13 Twitter account and on Facebook, uh, put out a little... Uh, um, image saying any questions send us a message and the same applies to our YouTube stream as we run live here tonight for at least this hour um, and if you've got any questions that you'd like to direct to us about I guess anything because we are late season here and I suppose there's plenty of time to talk about other things um, send them in start your message with force 13 all in text and uh, in the chat section and we'll get on to it on your screen right now is the latest imagery from Ethan's screen showing us uh, the rather interesting looking and uh, potent looking Tropical Depression 28 known by the Philippines as Sarah. Yes, indeed. This is TD28W, as Nathan said. It's been having some flare-ups of convection throughout the day today, but it looks to be being sheared right now as it is Kalmegi, you can see it on the top left there, it looks terrible. <laughs> but I'd say TD-28W, known as Sarah in the Philippines, should intensify to a tropical storm very soon. The JMA updated it just before we started streaming, and they kept it as a tropical depression, though I think they will name it very soon. And the, the storm could make landfall on the northern tip of Luzon, but the current forecast is not calling for a land landfall on Luzon. It's currently forecasting a pass just to the north of it to the north and any systems that go north of Luzon in november usually get sheared to death yep and here's kalmegi you can just oh, see dear. its slow lever center has been completely stripped of convection really and the, you can see quite clearly the center making landfall in northern Luzon, and it's been under 30 to 40 knots of wind shear by the looks it does look appalling, but the wind speeds are probably only going to be decreasing fairly slowly, at least to begin with. 
you can see that there was you know, there is that center of circulation there that looks to have clearly made landfall not far from Santa Ana on the northeastern tip of Luzon um, and I, I wonder how long it's going to sit there bearing in mind it's imminently about to be pushed away by its uh, close sibling in 28w absolutely still seeing we're still seeing some significant convection around the center with all that she with especially with all that shear um just completely just tearing it apart but uh look it seems that this storm does not ha really have much longer to live Nonetheless, now, I'm not sure. signal 2 warnings are in effect for parts of northern Luzon and signal 1 warnings extending about halfway down the island of Luzon as well. Well, I'm not sure if the viewers did see my cones that I posted earlier today on our social media outlets, but I was forecasting dissipation of Kalmagi in around 48 hours from now, and I was also forecasting 28W to make a close pass to Luzon in around three days from now. Hmm, interesting. We'll get on to that again shortly. We've just got more imagery here of Sebastian, which formed earlier today in the Atlantic. Looks terrible, especially on the western side. Let's just switch back to that imagery there um, from the GOES floaters. Um, and on the right-hand side, you can see the edge of Sebastian. Uh, the center is on that water vapor imagery, um, but you can't see it because it's so poorly defined. Um, it is mostly exposed, folks. Uh, 45 miles an hour. How much strengthening do we expect? This is a difficult question to ask because its current appearance is not going to be the appearance it has for a while. Uh, one thing that I can say is that despite the fact the center is decoupled from its convection, um, it is very, very clearly defined, even on infrared, which means it's certainly got some strength to it. And it's certainly um, a well-established center of circulation. It's going to be struggling over um, about the next day or so with shear and especially with these, this convection that's decoupled from, from it. Uh, but we do have an interesting model spread. NHC is going with the post-tropical transition about 48 hours, uh, but a lot of storms are keeping it uh, pretty uh, strong and actually are saying there's a fair chance that this thing could strengthen for the next 48 to 72 hours and still be a, a tropical cyclone. Um, although it but it's going to be moving very, very quickly after the 48-hour mark. Um, I think that a 70, 75-mile-per-hour storm is not out of the question. Oh um, I, I would say that uh, it's unlikely, but I'd say that it's not impossible at this point, especially considering the year is 2019 and we've already seen some pretty insane stuff this year. God. Yeah, it's been very a very unpredictable season so far, I would say. What I will add on to that is if Sebastian's center can build convection on top of it, then I will say a 75 mile per hour peak is certainly in the site. But as, based on its current appearance, I would say a 75 mile per hour peak isn't even likely. I'd say 60 mile per hour for now. Mm. Uh, we had some questions. Will Sonya form by the end of this year? <laughs> No takers on that one. <laughs> uh, Too early to tell. It's, I mean, yeah, East Pack is usually shut by now. Very rare storms that form out. Have, yeah. Although we, we, did, have usually, TV, we did have a we. I do remember, like I do remember, we had um, some pretty uh, late season storms lately in the uh, uh, in the Pacific, East Pacific. Not usually this late, though. And there's another look at the Sebastian models. Um, what have we been thinking of HWRF and uh, one or two of its model, or one of models nearby it, HMON and CDCX, calling that maybe Sebastian would reach Category 2? What are we thinking about that? Not enough time. It's It just comes down to the fact that Sebastian would need to get its act together very quickly. And it so <laughs> it's yeah. it's not and it's not going to this storm has a very compact center of circulation um so the only real thing that could happen is that the convection couples with it 
if the convection and the center are on top of each other by tomorrow morning, and the mid-level and low-level center are vertically stacked by tomorrow morning, then I would say it's not out of the question. But guess what? That's not going to be the case. This will not have occurred by tomorrow morning. And because of that, we will not be seeing a Category 2 storm. <laughs> okay. Um, just want to point out, for some reason, the clock isn't working on our screen tonight. Um, it, with the last time I did a live stream here on the on our proper format was in October, so early October. So everything's got a bit rusty here, but uh, we'll try and get that fixed for next time. Um, let's get some more questions. Do we think there will be another Atlantic storm? I would say very unlikely at this point, but... There's still, I mean, we're in, we are in, hurricane season does end in 11 days. 11 days to the finish line, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, it could happen. The thing that really has me is um, that the season, you know, it doesn't feel all that active, at least to me. Just because a lot of these storms have not been fantastic in appearance and not very memorable, but but we we are all the way to the S now. It's it's been an active year, it's um, and so, so I'd say that, that uh, there is a fair chance of um, seeing one more system before the end of the. Year. And if NHC added the uh, Mediterranean to the Atlantic Basin, it would be at least V now, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, I think there's another question there. Um, oh, crap, just sorry. talking about whether Sebastian would become a hurricane shortly before turning post-tropical. Well, um, that is, as we've said, a possibility. Um, but I guess the main feature we're really talking about is the um, Western Pacific activity. So um, I don't know where we go next with that. There are signal one and two warnings in effect over parts of the Philippines. And if you've got any questions with regards to that or with anything else, then do send us a message. Um, ah, another question there. Is 28W having a Fujiwara effect with Kalmegi? Well, no, it I, is not. I don't think so, but it is close, but I don't think it's close enough. Hmm. And uh, I'm seeing a lot of uh, comments there as well. All right, here we go. We've got some more questions. Let's go straight to some more questions then. Uh, will Tanya form? We've mentioned that already. Um, you, well, it is that sort of year. <laughs> Probably. Um... <laughs> There is something developing to the right of Papua New Guinea. Ah, right. Well, this is where Ethan comes in. Because there is something <coughs> happening in the South Pacific, and Ethan is very excited. Well, I wouldn't say excited, but models have been hinting within the five to seven day period, yes, that the Southern Hemisphere season will be finally starting up in the South Pacific. It's not every year. Well, I've noticed that we see the first storm to form in the Southern Hemisphere season in the South Pacific. But nonetheless, pretty much every single major model, the GFS, the Euro, the uh, the ECMWF, the ICON model, all those are on board with at least a Category 1 hurricane equivalent cyclone forming next week in the South Pacific. Watch Where... that form. <laughs> <laughs> but... Most models agree that it should take a southeastward turn paralleling Vanuatu and then make a turn to the southwest where we'll encounter high wind shear and we can from there on out. Threat to land then? Uh, too early to tell. Okay. If you want to show us some graphics on that, Ethan, you're more than welcome to as well. But thanks for pointing that out, Storm Trackers. Um, uh, what is the chance of Tanya forming? Everyone wants to know about everyone. Sebastian is active, and everyone wants to know about the next storm. Doesn't that well, tell you let's... something? Yeah, I mean, if we look the general uh, 
Atlantic scene is going to be, um, we're going to get all of these um, nor'easter-like systems, or the, these lows pumping off the U.S. with lines on them and very strong and deep trough into the Atlantic over the next few weeks, which is kind of what Sebastian's attached to. So the formation of Sebastian, the the general way it formed, the opportunities will be there again and again and again over the next couple of weeks. Problem is, it's just rare. So, the, I guess the moral of the story is, I wouldn't expect it to occur, but the um, ingredients for the um, for tropical cyclone formation, the same ingredients that caused Sebastian to form are going to be there over the next few weeks. And another question, based on current trends, when do we think Ambali will form? What basin is this? That would be, I think, the Southwest Indian Ocean. Sounds like it. Um, yes. Not sure, really, but I would say probably within the next two to three weeks, just by guess. Two to three um, weeks. Models aren't really hinting on formation within the next seven days in the Southwest Indian Ocean. Well, speaking of models, Ethan, you've got them. Yep, first off, we're taking a look at the Atlantic. Why wouldn't we? <laughs> but you can see right here, this 1,009 millibar low is what we currently know as Tropical Storm Sebastian. And if you put this into motion here, you can see the GFS model gradually weakens this system and again, it gets observed into a non-tropical low pressure system. And eventually, it looks like that it heads up to your neck and it was Nathan. Thanks. <laughs> and towards the end, you can actually see a significant storm system developing across the United States. Mm. All right. Now we're going to head over to the South Pacific here. Yep, <laughs> I figured you would. All right. It is a running so joke, isn't it, Ethan, that you are a particular fanboy about this next storm. Particularly, well, this is what the GFS run is saying on the South Pacific. You can see in around 48 hours from now, there is signs of tropical cyclone formation. And within around, really, probably this coming weekend, we should start to see some sort of system developing within the South Pacific. This is the general time frame which systems, which the models have this system developing. And it gradually intensifies, and some models bring it off to towards Vanuatu, some of it to get towards even Fiji a little bit. But most models are indicating that it'll take a general well, southeast turn. No, it doesn't. Yeah, but, but all models indicate some sort of a southeastward track and a general southwestward turn occurring at some point. While the GFS model indicates that it'll be a weak Saffir Simpson or Hurricane Cat 1 at peak equivalent. Some models say stronger. CMC is saying that it might even get up to a category 3 at peak. What? CMC, did you say? <laughs> yes. Excuse me. The Canadian me. mob. That's just what I've been noticing on pressure. On You're pressure. telling me the Canadian model wants a Cat 3. Yeah. Okay. That is interesting. I have noted that in um I'll be running a couple of numbers on that here soon. <laughs> well I guess while we're here no. we can show models for the Western Pacific. Yes. As it loads. Absolutely. Well, as we wait for it to load here, um, I was noticing earlier, while looking at earlier runs, it was showing some sort of system forming near Guam, I think. Let's have a look if it still has that system. You can see TD28W and Kalmegi interacting near Luzon. Uh, T looks like that GFS puts, pushes TD28W, also known as Philippine name Sarah, to almost to a minimal typhoon by the looks of it. And it gradually weakens it That's in possible. the South China Sea. And then within the real news threshold hour 168, you can start to see maybe a minimal tropical storm developing in Low the latitude. quote unquote main development region. Yeah. Yeah, by the looks of it. 
That's very interesting. Um, and very common for low latitude systems to form there near the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been noticing in some of the past animations that, that we've been publishing, you we have strong cat fives, 160, 175 mile per hour storms in in uh, October and November, so this could very well be another one this year. Indeed. Okay, uh, we had some more questions that came in at this point, and do keep sending them in. Uh, it is very viewer-led, particularly tonight, because uh, or this morning, local time, wherever you are, because, um, you know, there's not a huge emergency situation going on like we've had plenty of times this year so far and we had to close off comments but um okay uh here's one a very interesting question i know you have some disagreements with the nhc on a number of storm status this year when they post when the nhc post postseason analysis will we submit to their readings well um i would just like to say really that we always want to be correct, we want to be unbiased, we want to uh, practice the best possible science to reach these readings, and it's not an exact science, so there will be differing numbers all the time. Um, so we'll just wait and see what the National Hurricane Center say. What I will say is that the, the uh, post-cyclone report on Barry came out recently, didn't it? Yep. Today, Today actually. Um, we agree yeah. it was a hurricane, so there's one thing we agree on. <laughs> Even though it was one of the messiest hurricanes, probably a top three messiest Atlantic hurricane that I've seen. Yeah, I just like one. the. Top I can one. just, I can just picture, I could just picture that. I, I could just picture Barry is li is literally like all of the con most almost all the convection was off the was off of the coast. Yep. Um, let's see what else we have. Uh, would we be surprised if Tropical Storm Wendy formed? Well, steady on. Well, there's a few more before that. <laughs> well, that would be quite difficult for the, for a season to produce. What would that be? Three new storms. When there's only 11 days left of the season. Of course, storms can happen after season, but uh, out of season. But um, only 2005. Well, maybe other seasons did it, but 2005 is one big example of late season activity, and we haven't really had one of them. Yep, I know that 2003, I think, had two storms in December, so that's not out of the question. Mm. Even one storm in November is not a question. Indeed. Even so, on that. Yep. Even on that. Even on that subject, I believe 2005 was the last year that we had a storm in December, if I'm not mistaken. And I think this is a more generic question that's been posted here. What are the chances of a December storm? in the Atlantic. Well, in a given yeah, that, year. That would be post that would be post season storm. Do you think it's more it's gonna be more than one in ten, isn't it? When you I look believe at, so. When you look at climatology. Maybe about one in five. I don't know. Somewhere near one in five maybe. I mean it depends on if the pattern remains the same. Sea surface temperatures around where Sebastian formed should be fine. Um, so it's basically just going to be a question of whether we're going to have a uh, particular system uh, that manages to get a well-established center of circulation. And as of now, I think one or two isn't terribly out of the question. Uh, but I'm not going to be holding my breath for it. Loss would like to give us a percentage on how likely we all think Van is this year. 
I don't know why everyone's asking us these questions. <laughs> Sebastian is currently active. There's no inkling of any other system in the Atlantic. They're all asking about how, what the chances are that, okay, Tanya, I guess. But the next one's after that? Um, it's the hype, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Van. Well. I call it Vaughn just, just so it doesn't sound like the vehicle. Yeah, well, it depends. But at the moment, we're looking at half of Sebastian on the screen on our right-hand side. That is imagery that updates quite often. Um, that last image was five minutes ago. Um, there is quite a bit of convection on the eastern side, but the western side looking very devoid. And if you look very carefully on that imagery, we don't have the daylight anymore because obviously nightfall, but um, you can see just about very closely the circulation within that air mass um, imagery and it is tracking generally westward at the moment I think northwest looks a bit more west to me on latest imagery I'd be inclined to agree yep I would be inclined to agree as well just looking at my imagery now and now I see what it is. There's been a comment. We want more hurricanes. That's why everyone's asking the questions, of course. How could I not know that? Anyway, this is Force 13 Live. We're coming up to half past the hour. The latest information is that Tropical Storm Sebastian formed earlier today and now has winds of 45 miles per hour in the open Atlantic. Won't be affecting any land areas. There aren't even any uh, percentage chances for land impacts. Tropical Storm force winds. A uh, different story in the Philippines though, as you look to the left hand side of our screen on the bar there, um, you can see that the percentage chances in northern Luzon are very high at this point from Kalmegi. Local name uh, is Ramon and also we've also got the Philippine name Sarah which is 28W and that is also headed towards the Philippines. More imagery of Kalmegi on the left-hand side of your screen on the middle panel there now. Um, you can see the visible, just about reaching visible on the top image, and on the bottom the infrared looking very, very poor. And there is the National Hurricane Center graphic for Sebastian as well, uh, calling for a curve towards the north and northeast. And you can see the wind profile there uh, staying well away from land. Something I did notice with Sebastian in regards to its first and second advisory, the second advisory cone, the most recent one, is actually much farther west than the first one. Hmm. And also there now, the JTWC track maps showing two distinctly different directions for those two cyclones in the Western Pacific. Um, as we said, with Kalmegi stalling at the moment, but you would think it would get a move on towards the southwest pretty soon and then die very quickly. Uh, meanwhile, 28W heading generally towards a northwesterly direction. Would you say a land intera uh, an interaction between the two systems is still possible? What do you mean? Between Kalmayegi and the, the uh, invest in the West Pack. Well, Kalmayegi is uh, capitulating so horribly right now that uh, I don't think there'll be any of it left by the time Philippine named Sarah gets there. I think that part of the reason why it's getting sheared to death is because of Sarah's outflow, I think. Potentially, it is quite broad at this time indeed um nathan what what, uh, what watches and warnings do we currently have effect in the philippines we do indeed we have signal two warnings in effect for parts of northern luzon just going to get that information um specific information for you um as we approach half past seven local time in the philippines and just trying to get that here so, signal 2 warnings are in effect for the Batanas Islands, which are off the northern part of Luzon. 
Kagiyan, including Babion Islands, Apayao, Kalinga, Abra, Ilocos Nort, and Ilocos Sur. Signal 2 warnings mean that winds of greater than 61 km per hour and up to 120 km per hour may be expected in at least 24 hours. So it's basically the equivalent of a tropical storm warning. Signal 1 warnings are in effect for northern parts of Isabella, Mountain Province, Benguwe, Ifugao, La Union and Pangasinan, mainly on the western part of northern Luzon. Um, the chances for tropical storm impacts on the eastern coast of Luzon are decreasing substantially at this time. At least from Kalmegi at least, right? From Kalmegi, of course. Uh, whether whether TD28W becomes a tropical storm, and that obviously opens up the possibility of tropical storm force winds, but at the moment, the Philippines aren't doing any warning signals in relation to local name Sarah. That does not surprise me, considering that the storm is only forecasted really three days away. Is it that long? Around there. All right. It might be as early as 48 hours from now, but it's, it's really roughly that time frame. Yep. Um, okay, so if anyone's got any more questions for us during this hour of coverage on these storms right now, send us a message. Uh, start your message with Force 13 all in text. It will light up for us in the chat section. Um, and no more at this moment, but... I'm sure there will be at some point. So well, I would just like yes. I would just like to point out the latest JMA forecast on each of these systems. Yes, the JMA currently the has here too. Yes, the JMA currently has local name Sierra as a 35 mile per hour, 1,000 millibar tropical depression at this time, and they are forecasting. Um, on the 20th of November, in the e that evening, they are forecasting the storm to be at 50 miles per hour, remarkably, hmm. and a pressure of 92 millibars. So their JMA looks to be potentially going for some rapid intensification. That's not too remarkable, really. But going off of their forecast, they're forecasting it to be pretty much knocking on Luzon's doorstep in around 24 hours, which I find to be early. Well, that's what I was thinking. And in relation to Kalmegi, they have it at 45 miles per hour and at 98 millibars currently. And they are forecasting weakening to a tropical depression very soon. In dissipation in, 20, in around, looks to be 24 hours from now. All right. Uh, we had quite a few more questions. Um, <laughs> quite more general questions now. You can ask us almost anything storm related at this point really. What names are most likely to be retired in the Atlantic? Dorian, definitely. Yeah. Dorian, uh, I would say be I would say two names. Dorian and Imelda. Why Dorian? Well, that's obvious. Why Imelda? Well, because it caused really catastrophic flooding across the Houston area and some locations that were affected by Harvey got worse got worse um, effects from Imelda than they did from Harvey yeah uh, if I'm not mistaken that would be the only the third tropical storm strength system to get retired in the Atlantic the last one to do that was Allison and it was in the same name list as well Another question got sent Erica in. It's a pretty good question as well on this subject. We know about Joaquin, but what about Lorenzo? It sunk a ship. Will it get retired? Did Joaquin get retired for sucking the El Faro? Well, it didn't do much else. <laughs> well, it wrecked the Bahamas. It flooded the areas. Dorian How many wrecked the Bahamas. How many deaths did Lorenzo cause? That... I think only three, but I don't know. Was it? I'm not sure, though, but I know it wasn't. In as which many case, as I would say probably not. I mean, storms have sunk ships in the past as well. Mm -hmm. 
Just looking at it now, 10 killed, 7 ten. missing. I thought I three, thought it was higher than 3, three so... Million. You know, I will... Well, that, that, well, that might be miss, nice. but I would, uh, I would just be on the side of no for that, if I was gonna... I would too. Guess. I mean, mm -hmm. I, personally, I wouldn't, but thinking about what they might do, well, probably, most likely not. Okay, uh, how strong was Bourloy? Any well, insight on that? Well, it depends whose analysis you go by. The JTWC did not even have it as a super type term, but it right. was most likely definitely one and probably a Category 5 as well. We did list it as a Category 5. I think that you have its peak at 165, right? There's been so many storms this year, I really can't remember uh, what we've listed all of these as. Uh, rest assured, at the end of the year, quite a taxing year it's been, uh, we will we're actually be one, doing an We're actually one of all off of from the average. An 18W is going to be 90, well, be, would be 91 if it forms. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> 18W, we had, the, it would be the 90, what, the 91st storm, and that is actually the That's global average. 28W, sorry. It is indeed the global average in recent times, 91. Looks like we're going to exceed that like we did last year. Um, but I don't think we're going to exceed it by as much as we did in 2018. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, Force 13 will be going through all of those analyses again at the end of the year when we're producing our uh, full season animations, which are coming up as always in December. And probably January. <laughs> because the West Pacific well, will probably still be active on December 31st, like it usually is. Well, I guess on the subject of Bulloy, I think its yeah. peak was 165. Interesting. I think 160. Just had a look at this, Nathan. You have it at 165. Well, there we go. Uh, that was our position at the time. What will be the last West Pacific storm name of this year? If only we had a crystal ball. My random guess would be Bong Fong, but that's just a random guess. I think that's the best we could do, random guessing, to be honest on that. Yep. Um, oh, just skipped across some more there as well. Just uh, There were a lot more questions. I am getting onto them. Uh, I, I remember yeah. a few weeks or months ago... Riley and I were talking together, and I remember that we said that there is a high probability of 2019 basically pulling a 2014 and having a lot of strong system <laughs> in October yep. and November, and that certainly happened. Yeah. Yep. In a different area, though, interestingly. Yep. yep. Five years. Yep. Five years later, similar thing happened. That area near the Marianas Islands, it's it's just been crazy this year. Harvey says that we should remaster 2006 East Pacific hurricane season and the 2012 Atlantic hurricane season animations. We'll put that, we'll take that on board. I'm not sure if that's going to be happening anytime soon, um, but we will be doing a lot more real world animations in 2020. Uh, what if Sebastian becomes a Barry 2.0, a terribly disorganized hurricane? I think we needed that clarification there. Well, what if? It would probably still look better well, than Barry if it became a hurricane. I don't know, but I know if it looks like that, it probably won't be estimated as one. Alright. Do we think I mean, I Rebecca was an unusual storm? Yes. How many Atlantic storms haven't been unusual this year? Um, probably, I would I'm say, I'm struggling. I would say Jerry, maybe. <coughs> would you say that was one of them? Maybe. That, Chantal, I'd say Chantal. Oh, no, Chantal was unusual. We can't even say. agree amongst ourselves on that one. Um... There is a question. It didn't mention us, but uh, will we be doing coverage on winter storms in Europe? Well, 
we've never done that before, but if people who want to do winter weather coverage join the team, then maybe we will. If you do want to get involved in uh, what we do, whether it's hurricanes or whether it's weather elsewhere, we could look, look looking into other things, who knows? Yep. You can always send us a message or join our Discord server, which is linked underneath our live stream. Um, that's where a lot of our community is at the moment. Yes, and Force 13 also does have a UK and Ireland regional channel. Oh, don't we know? Don't we know? Well, um, not much has been going on there recently, but hopefully we'll be doing some more stuff. The weather's been appalling here recently. Um, uh, oh, that's a, an odd question. What will be the first Christmas Atlantic hurricane? Um, how on earth are we supposed to answer that question? Will Sebastian affect St. Lucia indirectly? No. No. Um, I remember there. I remember there was one storm that did strike in the Westpac on Christmas. Knock ten. Knock ten. Quite often. Yes. Ethan, what are we looking at now? Uh, this is a satellite estimated rainfall estimates. I believe this is hourly um, rainfall estimates for for Calmegi and local name Sarah. You can see just the extent of the rainfall of Sarah and how disorganized Calmegi looks. It looks terrible at the moment. Yeah, that is. But if I had to guess, fifteen minutes that imagery. Yeah, that one. But if I had to guess, some heavy rainfall. I think you said fifteen inches earlier. Can be expected from. Uh, no, I got I'm that wrong. Sure uh, I actually meant one fifty to one seventy five millimeters, which is about seven inches. Uh, but I'm not sure how much rainfall is forecast in in relation to Sarah. Well, it should miss. So, assuming it misses, then not very much. There is still the possibility that it could make landfall in Luzon. To be honest with you, on that uh, imagery, it doesn't look all that, does it, Sarah? <laughs> no, it they looks like it's absolutely there. terrible. Well, Sarah's a developing tropical cyclone at this time, so it shouldn't be surprising. Will we be surprised if the 2019 season had more storms than the 2005 season? What, 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 what was that? Can you repeat the question? That's the question. I want to make sure I heard in. that right. I'm sorry to laugh at you for that question. I'm sure it had thought, but will we be surprised if the 2019 season had more storms than the 2005 season? Yes. I would I be, um... I hope you know that that floored. requires, what, nine or ten more storms? Yeah, I would be floored if 2019 ends up being more active in 2005 and i would declare 2019 to without a doubt be the most strange year in tropical cyclone history how strong no i did function is another question we get there uh i think at least a category four i haven't finalized my numbers on it yet yeah fengsheng yeah yeah Definitely a cat four, I would say. Probably, I would say between 125 and not. Do we all think Sebastian will be the last Atlantic storm of the season? We sure hope so. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, certainly yeah. do with high confidence so. because November isn't really all that favorable for formation and it's been shown climatologically. And I don't, and, I and, think that. This one will be the last one. How many storms have we had this month? In the Atlantic? Mm hmm I think one. When was Rebecca? Late October, I think. Yeah. Still, man. But what I will say in response to a previous question, I did look up the totals and... For this decade, 2019 is tied with 2011 as the second most active this decade behind 2010. If we get one more tropical depression to form this season, it'll be tied with 2010. 
Another question, because of Hyan, Hagabis, and Halong, do we think the next Westpac H name will be a Category 5? I'm just gonna, Good I'm just question. gonna throw one out there and say yes. Good question. What is the next name that begins with H anyway? I'm, I'll figure it out right now. Alright, we'll get back to that. Meanwhile, Charles has asked me when will Tropical Storm floppy disk form? Never, hopefully, and uh, you can't make jokes like that at the moment because David's not here, so uh, the uh, effect of that is completely gone. Um, when will the 2019 Atlantic Hurricane season animation be released? They're really hyped for it. Um, I think last year it was December 10th or the 11th, um, so if that gives you a bit of a measuring stick... This year, we'll wait and see. As soon as we're confident, basically, that there's not going to be another storm is when we'll release it. Uh, the next H name in the West Pacific is Hagovit. Oh, God. Oh. 2014, wow. anyone? Yep. I thought Hagabit. I thought Hagabit. I thought Hagabit you replaced Hagabit. 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 Yeah. What? It's Sorry. a different... You're telling me it's a different... Uh, yeah, they are system. Di <laughs> different, yes. They're totally different. They do exist separately. Yep. How strong was Lekima? Uh-oh, here we go. Well, I have a different opinion than most in here. What do you think Lekima's um, peak was? 155.905. Oh, goodness. I would be inclined to agree with 155. I have to respectfully disagree with you. I'm inclined to agree with Nathan, 160 mile per hour peak. <laughs> well, all I'll say is that all of the storms are going to be analyzed again by us later on at the end of the year and do our post cyclone, um, you know, analysis. I don't think there'll world be many changes. Report. Our world cyclone report comes up at the end of the year. It's a good read, um, full of stats. I don't think there's going to be huge changes in post analysis. The only ones that we have confirmed is that how long is being kept at 190 miles per hour, 890 millibars. I think that's the only one we've confirmed actually out of all of these. Um, there is you... a chance that Dorian could have an upgrade by us in our post analysis, but we don't know yet. I just want to point out you did, uh, you did upgrade Hagabus from 188 to 185 as well. That's right, we did do that too. Yeah. But we haven't mm -hmm. had time to look at all of the others and do a reanalysis yet. Um, and more stuff here. We should do snowstorm coverage in New England like nor'easters and make a season out of them. It would be interesting. Well, I'll tell you one thing, anything to do with that, and if you're interested in taking part, Force 13 US. We do have a US channel. It's run by our member Tim at the moment, and uh, it, you can find all of our related channels by looking at our channel page, uh, and you'll see all the related accounts down the right-hand side. Force 13 US, uh, dealing with all of that regional weather. And uh, a lot of these people in here, Thomas, Ethan in particular, uh, you were, and Sam, working a lot on that as well, aren't you? Yeah, we're working hard yeah. over on the U.S. side of things. Um, more updates and more content should be produced on the U.S. end of things soon. For those of you that have been following it, you'll probably notice there's been a lack of content as of late. That will be improving um, pretty quickly here relatively soon as the team has become a lot more organized. So hopefully <laughs> by um, this weekend, next weekend-ish, you'll start seeing updates once every other day, something like that. And We're you'll been, also be mm. seeing special updates on things such as winter storm. I know the main channel has been a little bit barren recently as well. There is a lot more to come, pretty sure of that. Um, we should develop an app for iOS and Android for us to make our own hypo animations. <laughs> Head in hands time. Um, but we, used, we used to have that, didn't we, on web browser? Sort of. I don't doubt that that would be extremely popular, but I've certainly not got the brains for that. Um, 
let's see what else we've got here. Do we believe that our estimates for how long were accurate and how do they compare to local agencies' estimates? Well, we did mention that just before. That comment probably came in before I mentioned it. Um, but I'm pretty sure that our observations on that are solid. Um, the raw satied values were as high as 196 miles per hour. You could argue a theoretical upper end of that there. Um, but 190 seems fair. What did the other agencies say? It was completely wrapped up in that. Forgot. JTWC said, was it only 160 miles an hour? Or was it a bit more? One Much more. 180. Oh, sorry. Which one was only 160 then? Agabus. Ah. Well, that's going to... We're going to get confused between those so much. Um, and uh, more messages there as well. That's a nice message, Slayer Tracks. Um, I wouldn't say that I've been through a particular amount, but thank you. We should make new symbols is another uh, comment that comes in. You know what? There's half of people watching probably who will think, yeah, I'll make new symbols. The other half saying, what, again? Um, but, well, 2020, maybe we'll have some new symbols. Who knows? We'll see. What do we think Dorian's peak was? I guess I'll open that question to you guys. I would say 80, 186. 186. Possibly. 186. <laughs> okay. I think there's. I think that there's certainly recon evidence to support an, an intensity of 190. 185. Okay, so I'm. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I'm not really that set on what Dorian's intensity was. Um, 185 is official. I think regardless of if you go with 185 or 190, we can all agree Dorian was an exceptionally powerful hurricane. And nonetheless, it was extremely dangerous. But if I had to um, go with one, I think there is definitely an argument for 185. The argument for 190 is a little iffy, so I'm going to go with 185 for now. I'll have to examine the evidence more thoroughly before I'll um, say it's whether it's 190 or not. But at least 185. Why is the ace this season so low? The accumulated cyclone energy. Depends on which basin. In the Atlantic. The Atlantic, is not... because of a lot that had mainly uh, subtropical and tropical storms. There were only, I think we only had games. And they weren't even that, some were, weren't even that strong. Two of them weren't. A lot of weak storms, yeah. Um, what was the damage cost of Dorian is another question we've got there 8 billion pi will rise yeah that's something that we're yet to look at as well costings of all of these storms I'm sure we'll find out proper numbers if that isn't it might be uh, could end up being around that or higher um Let's see, what else have we got? We've still got questions flooding in. We're here to serve, you know, we're just looking at these storms here, but we'll take more questions. Um, would, what's this? Would we rather choose what storms get retired or choose what names replace the retired storms? I don't really understand that question, I'm afraid. I certainly don't want the responsibility of doing it, if that's what you're asking. Um... Do we think Lorenzo will be downgraded by the National Hurricane Center in the post analysis? I think it's a flat out no. They will not do it. They are, um, even if, you know, they might think, no, okay, there is a, there's a, because it is an, um, an inexact science, there is that error bar. There's a possibility it was a Category 5. I think there's more possibility it was a Category 4. If the National Hurricane Center think it's a Category 5, then okay. But if they actually think it was a Category 4, they've called it a Category 5, and I don't think they'd be prepared to... Uh, it would be quite embarrassing for them if they went and downgraded it afterwards, even though it didn't affect land. I still think it would be embarrassing for them. Um, so I don't think they will. They never have done in the past operationally. So that leads me to think they won't do it now. Well, if I'm not mistaken, heard at 
Is They've that, done it on there for storms, for storms that happened before half of the people alive today were born. But um, they won't do it for recent storms, I don't think. Because if I'm not mistaken, one storm that's raised a lot of questions in recent heard at is Carla. It has. It has indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's another debate. Do we think 2019 Westpac will be more active than 1997 Westpac? <laughs> no. No. That's a big flat out no. That that season had more than a thousand ace in the Westpac. Uh, people want us to bring back Hypo World. Um... Oh, the questions have gone by too fast for me here. Um, how do we join Force 13? Well, the best way to do it is to either send us a message, contact at force13.com, or uh, via our Discord server, which is linked in our description. And, of course, we've got all of our other social platforms as well. We will be finishing up shortly, so let's just reiterate... Uh, what the latest information is on these storms around the world. It's been a good chat, by the way. Um, Tropical Storm Sebastian formed earlier today in the Atlantic. It won't be affecting any land areas, thankfully. Um, It's a late-season cyclone on your screen right now, 45-mile-an-hour winds, pressure 1,006 millibars. It will be moving towards the north and northeast. Kalmagi, still somehow with winds of 70 miles per hour, looks terrible, uh, moving inland over northern Luzon, and moving towards the southwest. Uh, Signal 2 warnings still in effect there in parts of northern Luzon. To its east, we have Tropical Depression 28W, which has the local name Sarah, um, and that one could also possibly strike northern Luzon or move just north. Uh, Luzon is expecting maybe 7 or 8 inches of rain in the next few days, which could cause local flooding. Uh, particularly northern Luzon and that mountain region most likely will be seeing the form of flash flooding and landslides Um, quick comments from the team before we finish up because we are running low on time now I would just like to point out that the NHC has issued their tropical weather outlooks and they're not expecting any formation within the East Pacific Central Pacific or the Atlantic within the next five days hooray (laughs) That's great news. Unless you wanted to track some more storms this year. It is shutting down, I'm afraid. But the Southern Hemisphere will be warming up pretty soon. South Pacific, anyone? South Pacific, number one. All right. Well, um, I don't know. We've got just another minute here if anyone wants to say anything more. They've all gone quiet. But uh, as we pointed out, there is that potential for development in the South Pacific as well. Um, So that is also something to watch out for. Could become Rita. So So Nathan, even with all models being on board with it, do you personally think it's going to happen? With Rita? Of course, probably. Um, and also, we also have um, potential developments in the Western Pacific next week as well. Well, that was an interesting live stream. Uh, we'll be back again soon. It's, I know it's been a while since we've been live here. It's been a pleasure once again. Um, we'll have more updates across our sh- uh, across our social mediums, across YouTube as well, on all of our platforms. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Search Force 13 All in Text. And uh, you can also join our Discord server and all of our other platforms as well, listed underneath this video tonight. We'll see you again soon from myself and from the team. It's uh, been a good hour here, and stay safe over there in the Philippines underneath this storm. Good night.